Welcome to Swim Swam's 2023 event by event preview and picks for the 2023 Women's NCAA Championships in Knoxville. We are going through all 18 events being swum at the championships and giving you our picks for who we think is going to take the titles. And divers. Just kidding. <laughs> that would be rough for us. Brooks all right. <laughs> Easy. So first off, we start the meet with a 200 medley relay. Is there any other choice besides Virginia on this one? No. no. <laughs> nah. Texas Texas relay is gonna be is getting pretty good. I think there's a potential for a really fun battle for second with them mm-hmm. and NC State because Texas has for sure the breaststrokers, the butterflyers, pretty good freestyler, although they're better in the four medley in the freestyle leg with Olivia Bray swimming backstroke. Um, them and NC State could be a good battle for second, but I think Virginia's got the win. Yeah. Unless yeah. they do something cute, like they, they, they posted do. on their Instagram the other day, teasing a different lineup that <laughs> I don't think was real. Yeah. All right. Eight free relay. Who you got? Stanford. Stanford. I think it's the same story. Yeah. Unless Virginia, I think Virginia's best 800 free relay could give Stanford a run, but Stanford. what what is Stanford's best eight free relay lineup? Probably, I think Walsh. they go. Tuggle and oh well, no, I mean, what's Stanford's best? I think Stanford. Stanford's probably Ruck Husk, um, Nordman, and I think Kayla Wilson is also another one. I think they're gonna go with that. And I bet I bet Claire Curzon could be on the best. It just doesn't make sense to do. Yeah, they just need her Mm -hmm. more on the other four relays where their their situation is a little more dire. And I think they win it either way. Yeah, gotcha. Their top four this season are Taylor Rock, Kayla Wilson, Morgan Tankersley, and Tori Husk on a flat start. Yeah, Morgan Tankersley, interesting. Tankersley being a one forty three flat start and not making their relay is crazy. Mm -hmm. Huh. All right. So then we get into individual events, starting the meet off with the 500 freestyle. Erica Sullivan's top seed. The Stegi sisters aren't far behind her. What are we thinking? I think Erica wins it and Emma Wyant gets second because the Stegi sisters, both of them, at least for Kristen, I don't think because she's Tennessee, I don't think the Tennessee taper is going to work out very well. And I'm going to give Matt credit to your phone number. I think Sullivan is the pick here. This is a week event this year. So like there is potential to have like what we saw in the women's mile last year where somebody that we weren't really thinking about could win it. Um, But I think Emma Wyant, look, we saw Katie Ledecky bust out a crazy distance swim. Emma Wyant is getting to train with Katie Ledecky. That's a good point. Um, yeah, she, and, and with the second semester thing, she really was probably just cruising through SECs to get her cut. Um, I am going to pick Emma Wyatt by a nose, Erica Sullivan second, and then maybe Olivia Bray. If she, you know, Olivia Bray hasn't swum a lot of 500 freestyles, but she might catch a spark between now and then. The interesting thing is that Sullivan Sandpiper best time is faster than everyone here by a mile, but Wyant was faster than Sullivan by a significant margin last yeah. year. I think they're both in a better spot than last yeah, year. So I think they'll sure. both be better than they were at NCAAs last year. Mm-hmm. I think Emma Wyant is a better fit at Florida. Um, you know, her club coach where she had all that success going into the Olympics is a Florida guy. So I think there's just more comfort there. And I think Erica Sullivan coming out of the intent intensity of sandpiper training and the olympics and everything else that that she was dealing with i think last year was kind of a decompress year for her so i do think both are going to be faster than ncaa's last year i uh i just think wyant's got it all right 200 im nice. battle of the ages yeah. kate douglas v alex wall she got tori husk on the outside at the third seed what are we thinking here Hey, Douglas wins in 148.9. I'm still <laughs> thinking on that. I'm what? taking the under. I think it'll be faster than that. <laughs> yes, I, I support that. Anything sub sub 149, I support. But I think she has a 148, at least 148.9 in her. 
how many times have we seen these girls go go crazy Mickey Mouse video game times? And I don't think we've seen that yet in the 200 IM. Yeah, this is actually their, only their second time ever racing the 200 IM at a championship meet because they haven't raced each other since 2021 ACCs. And that was when Alex Walsh killed Kate Douglas on breaststroke and upset her. And that's not going to happen this time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think people are underestimating Tori Husk's ability to get in there. Um, You know, she doesn't have the same breaststroke leg as the other two do. But she's got a lot of talent, man. So uh, front half is faster than both Walsh and Douglas. Right. right. So I think I think I think there's a chance that all three get under 150. But I think the winner will be under 148. Nine. Mm hmm. The thing with Husk is that you think of her as a freestyle and a freestyler and a flyer, but she set best times in her other two strokes this year. Like she went a 50, 52 4 in the one back and a 214 in the two breast unsuited at a Stanford dual meet, which is pretty good for someone that doesn't swim breaststroke. So I think that's going to help in her. I am. Mm-hmm. That'd be so much more impressive if Kate Douglas didn't go 50.1 in the 100 back and <laughs> whatever fast time she goes in the 200 breaths. Right. <laughs> but Scotty's hipping of this era. But there's, there's Kate Douglas and then there's the mortals. We can't <laughs> compare the two. All right. Uh, the event that Kate Douglas isn't swimming, that's still somehow super stacked, 50 free. Gresham Walsh v. Maggie McNeil. Albiero's in there at third seed with a 21-3. But we've already seen two these two women go under 21 this year. I think oh, it's Gretchen takes one. it by a hair. I just think she just has so much momentum in the 50 free. Like she's she takes she, it. She think she's gone she under Gretchen. Again. multiple times this year, at least 10 times. Yin Yin, who do you think is gonna win oh, it? I said Gretchen. I said Gretchen. Yeah. Gretchen, I'm taking I think I'm taking Maggie. I think yo, know, I think she probably used a little more than she needed to to get those relays in. Like I think that was part of their team goal. Um, but I think that Maggie McNeil Rick Bishop magic will fire up again and I think she's going to pip Gretchen Walsh. Who do you, I think I think there's a chance Grace County gets in there for third though. I think she's on a war path. She's beating Albiro. I think there's a chance. I think she's on one. Well, their best times are similar, but yeah. UNC had a great mid season, and then their ACCs was meh. Yeah, but that's that's that um, probably means they're probably going to be better at NCAs. Well, isn't isn't their coach an old? Mark. Isn't he from that Frank Bishop tree where you go all in and at NCAA Frank Bush? Frank, so yeah, Frank Bush tree yeah. where you go all they in do. mid season and then well. Um, conference. his associate Jack Brown swam at Arizona when they won a title under Frank Mark was Bush. at Auburn, but he was also an mm. assistant for a long time at Missouri mm. under Greg mm. Rodenbaugh, who, who is, is. <laughs> a Bush guy. So I think that's that's keeping Very within true. the family pattern. <laughs> what about Very Amy true. Fulmer? She split under 21 multiple times i think ohio state wasn't that good at dropping from conferences to ncas but they were really good in 2021 at that and if they learn from their mistakes i could see amy fulmer having a few really good sprint races she's a very she's like a dark horse i believe it uh i mean i think you know we're talking about the battle for third though yeah yeah battle for third but (laughs) i think she's also in that conversation but speaking of those splits, let's move on to the tuner free relay, which Virginia <laughs> will most certainly win. <laughs> <laughs> when you have two swimmers who are going to point split 19 points on the relay, you're probably going to win. Do you we think we'll see it? That's the bigger split? question. Will we see a 19 point? I, I want to see so. a 19 point split. I don't think so. I think we're bumping, <laughs> bumping up against like the pragmatic limits. Um, mm. I think somebody's going to get close enough to make us all go, what? I don't think we're actually going to see a 19 point. So next up is kind of an interesting event with no real clear winner. The 400 IM, Ellen Nelson's top seed. No real clear winner. Alex Walsh is going to win by two seconds. (laughs) The only woman who has been under four minutes in the NCAA this year is Ellen Nelson. Emma Wyant is in there. Uh, who some may have as the 500 free champion, and Alex Walsh is in there as the defending 
as the defending 400 IM champion. Can anyone dethrone her? Uh, no. Well, for sure, we're going to see more than Ellen Nelson under four minutes in the final. Yeah. Um, I think it's Alex Walsh's race to lose. I think it's going to be a Virginia one, two. I think Emma Wyatt will also be under four minutes. Um, that's what I think. I think Leah polonsky has got a lot better than a 405 in her. I'll, I'll also add that. We have to remember that she's now on a Dave Durden taper. Um, so expect a big drop at NCAAs. I think she could, I think she could get under four minutes. What's her best time? She's been 405 this season. Is that her That's lifetime fine. best? No, she was 403 at Pac 12s last year. And then she added a bunch at NCAs, but obviously right. yeah, different situation this year. Yeah. I'm curious what as to whether Alex Walsh will be able to beat out Bella Sims and her best time, which was um faster than Walsh's NCA winning time last year. Um three fifth. D 356 59. Do we think she'll go that? So Yinyan's calling 2024 NCAA champion Bella Sims. I mean, who else? It's either her or yeah, probably. On the record. Wait, that that also begs the question: will Bella Sims swim in the NCAA next year? Oh, no. <laughs> no, probably not. Okay, 2026 NCAA champion. Because I think she'll need one year to adjust. She'll she'll come to Florida in 2024 and then take a year to adjust. Then Walsh is gone. And if Katie Grimes swims NCA, which I'm not sure if she will, that's going to be her competition. Yeah, so 2026 NCAAs is going to be Katie Grimes versus Bella Sims. Isn't it going to be crazy if they swim for different schools and then they just go like head-to-head for four more years like they're on the same team anyway? I would love to see that, but I'm not sure if either – them are going to do four years in the NCAA, which is, yeah. Good point. All right. Lots of questions to be answered, but we're not going to answer any of them here. We're just going to move to the next event, which is the women's hundred fly. Holy crap. You know how people say they love rivalries in swimming and they want more rivalries? Well, if you like rivalries, this is your race. Because I know it's very stacked, but there's so much history behind the Maggie McNeil, Kate Douglas showdown. They've been going head to head for three years. Fun fact, Maggie McNeil is the only woman that's ever touched in front of Kate Douglas at an NCAA championship meet. And Douglas took her record beat her last year oh my god there's just so much well, going on. and let's layer on top of that the tory husk maggie mcneil international rivalry yeah I mean, for the foreseeable future those two and uh what's her face from china are the sort of the Zang Fei. Yeah. yeah that are gonna be there in the hundred fly so there's this one's got i mean layers. emma mckeon oh yeah it's also there I know. I if, like she, to, if she swims it, if she swims it, I like to omit um, the Australians <laughs> because I know how they feel about that. Yeah, I think there's a chance that Emma McKeon doesn't swim it in the long term. Um, yeah. But you know what? I think everybody's undercounting Claire Curzon here. I mean, she was the fastest high school swimmer we've ever seen, and all of a sudden we think she's not going to be in contention with the fastest college swimmers ever. That doesn't make any sense to me. Well, she she just like. She has to keep dropping time and like there's already two women who have been 48 this season. Uh Husk has been 49-1, 49-0. I mean Claire Curzon's best is 49-3. It was the American record for like a month. Yeah. Former American record holder counted out at the NCAA championships. Yeah. yeah, all four of them are record holders, and one of them isn't even going to podium. All four of them are record holders. I love that. Yeah, <laughs> that should have been the headline. All four of them are record holders. All right. So Claire's got the double with the hundred back. I think I honestly think that there's a chance that Claire Curzon is just going to try to be a backstroker in the long term. That's what I predicted sense. in my Olympic trials thing. I had her making the team in both the one back and the two back. Yeah, it's not that it's necessarily an easier path there. It just seems to be where her career yeah, is going. Just better at it. She I mean, she well. does have a triple on that day. I don't think Tori or Kate or yeah, have, Tori and Kate have doubles, but yeah. Maggie has a double. Too. Yeah, LSU has all their relays on. Mm-hmm. 
Um, yeah. Although this is before. Right. Was, this is the right? first event of yeah. the so thing. Who's our pick to win? Drop the bomb. Hey, Douglas. Absolutely. So I wrote the preview for the one fly and I said, I said that I picked McNeil to win, but I'm getting second thoughts because not for any particular reason, aside from the fact that Douglas just always pulls up at NCAAs. I don't know. I don't know what to say, but yeah. Okay, except that that's not true because in 2021, when Maggie McNeil didn't have a broken elbow, she beat Kate Douglas two out of but three times. Do we times. know that the Ooh. elbow thing happened no, during a while? Because like, because I, I heard it like happened after her races were over. Okay, but like she was obviously not having a good meet anyway. <laughs> like Michigan was not in a great place last year at NC Two Ways. I mean, I think she's in a much better place, and she has beaten Kate Douglas twice head to head. What's her- cool is. Both of them, so they've both been under 49 this season, right? But they both have a history of going fast a lot of times in season and then going faster at NCAA. Yeah. That's what makes yeah. it better. Yeah. I'm yeah. still taking I'm still taking KD. I think I'm taking the, Maggie. I think the I think uh momentum is everything. Yeah, at NCAAs. I think momentum means so much. And I think Virginia's gonna have that momentum. After winning all three races on day one, even though I didn't pick that because I picked Maggie in the 50 free. But regardless, I think Virginia is going to have um, big Wait, momentum. You think they're going to win the 500 free? No. Okay, whatever. <laughs> they're going to win a bunch of races on day one. They're going to have a bunch of momentum. Um, I think there's a chance that by this point of the meet, Maggie is... Uh, this will be a different experience for Maggie because yeah. she will have relays there. She will have a team there, but they're not going to be as good or as deep as the Michigan team. Um, so yeah. I'm going to take Kate Douglas. But- and I said this in my preview. I said Douglas isn't the same swimmer that McNeil might be back in 2021. Like this is a different Kate Douglas that she's going to have to face. It. World oh, champion. And it's not a different Maggie McNeil. <laughs> I don't know. Maggie's always been pretty locked and loaded. Yeah. All right. Let's move on. Tuner freestyle. Wide open field. Brooklyn Dothright, University of Tennessee, first seed. Amy Canny, freshman out of Virginia, second seed. Kelly Pash, senior at Texas, third seed. Amy Fulmer of Ohio State, we mentioned earlier, fourth seed. All have been 142. Former champion Taylor Ruck as the fifth seed. 143-0. I said here? in my power rankings that Kelly Pash is going to win two NCAA titles, and I think this one's going to be one. And I know she, her best time is not as fast as Taylor Rock, and we know what 2019 Taylor Rock was capable of, but it just feels like every time Kelly Pash gets into a pool, she's getting better. She's just, a, like what Braden said with Kate Douglas, she just has a lot of momentum, and I think she's going to continue that momentum. And she drops oh. a ton of time. How do we feel about 2022 Taylor Ruck, who went 141-12, which is 1.3 seconds better than anybody's been this year? Well, I think Kelly Pash can drop a second and go 141 low as well. Yeah, I'm a big Kelly Pash fan. I think in this race, Taylor Ruck is a great short course yards 200 freestyler. She's the defending champion. I think she's been way faster than anybody in this field. I am going to take Taylor Ruck, but I like Kelly Pash for a second. I think I got to go with Taylor Ruck as well. Although, Amy Canny. We don't know. She's good all season. She could just do well, the Virginia the thing. And, and Amy Fulmer. <laughs> Amy Fulmer, another Amy, could also 142, could be up there as well. I already Hot added her for once, but... <laughs> You think she's gonna win? I'm no, confused. I don't think she's gonna win. I think she'll be a like top three or four. I think she's the fourth seed, and so I thought I had to say her name. <laughs> all right, hundred breasts. Also going to be a showdown. Also wide open. We got Caitlin Dobler, only woman who's been fifty six. Mona McSherry of Tennessee, fifty seven two. Lydia Jacoby, fifty seven two. And at LN 57.4, then it drops off pretty significantly from there. Who you got? <clears throat> I got Lydia Jacoby. 
I, I think she's going to win the 100 breast. Well. She's made a lot of strides in, in, in short course this season. I don't think she's quite there yet. I think Caitlin Dobler is on a she, more path. She's only ten, three tenths slower than Caitlin Dobler. And the thing with Jacoby is that she is clutch. She is a clutch swimmer. You saw that at Olympic trial. You saw that at the Olympics. I think she's going to pull. You something. saw that in the mixed 400 medley relay. Yes. Where she still split yes. 105 with no goggles. But I do think it's going to be close because you mean the mixed all... forward medley relay she shouldn't have been on. Sorry, I digress. <laughs> I mean, yes, but she did what she could. Yeah. But did we? I totally forgot about this until I was doing looking up stuff about NCAs. But Caitlin Dobler had mono before, well, not mono, but some sort of sickness before last year's NCAs, and she won. So and she dropped four tenths and won. She did not do great in any of her other races, but the one breast she won. Yeah, she wow. was second in the 200 breaststroke. Like, it wasn't a great second. Time, it was second. She... No, sorry, that's Petra. <laughs> sorry, 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 sorry. Correction. That's wrong. Um, but yeah, she was sick and she still dropped four tenths and still won the race. I think it's got to be Caitlin Dobler. I, I put her in my pick em. Um, I also think, I also think, I think Anna Lent has an edge to her. Um, I think this is no inside info. I think there's a chance that she's real pissed off about losing her relay spots and is going to channel that emotion in a way that is uniquely German and something stupid. And are you saying her, that Germans are angry? Points. No, I just think they're intense. Mm. They can be intense. So I think there's a chance she wants to take her relay spots back and that she's going to, but, but she only lost one spot. Yeah. She was and still on the two medley. Right. Alen, okay. There's only one relay that's after this. Alen so. is not the greatest final swimmer. She she was the top seed last year in finals and added. It happened at Worlds. I'm pretty sure she was her time from a pro series would have won the world title. And yeah, so I don't I don't have that much confidence in her. But you that's not angry, Anna. So now we're gonna get angry, Anna. <laughs> You think she wouldn't have been mad after the 100? She has the, best, she has the best time um, in the field, I think. The best personal best. 56.88 from NCAAs last year. In prelims. In prelims. <laughs> wow, wow. Maybe wow, that's just wow. a Texas thing. Like, going fast. Like, it used to be Carson Foster's curse, and he passed it on to the line. Jesus. <laughs> All right. Hunter back. Uh, Burkoff, Walsh, Kurzan all have been 49, 4 to 49, 2. Isabel Sodden's fourth seed at 50.7. I think it's a three horse race. This is an underrated race, isn't it? Yeah. I, I don't think like... this has been getting as much hype as the 100 fly, but like this is because really Maggie's good... not swimming it. Yeah. Yeah. So my pick is Maggie goes the best time out of the medley relay. <laughs> um, <laughs> but the is event she went swim on... backstroke on the medley relay. She went, she swam. I hope so. On the um, medley relay. <clears throat> um, so I'm going to go, I'm going to go Claire Curzon. You know, we've been talking about her backstroke coming around. It's after it's that really one fly, weird, but she's not getting enough love. Yeah. After that one fly, Reagan Smith handled the triple well last year. I think Claire's going to do it this year. That's true. I'm not doubting her abilities to handle the triple. I just don't think she's going to win because she's going to get third to Gretchen Walsh and Catherine Burkoff. And I think Gretchen Walsh is going to win. Um, yeah, she has the she was faster than Burkoff at ACCs, and that did not happen last year. And I don't know. She just I just feel like she just has really strong swim in her. She won fifty point zero on suited. You guys are doubting two time defending champion Catherine Burkoff, who goes forty eight <laughs> seven. I think that's crazy. I think Burkoff is going to do it again. She's done it twice already, and she can stick it to all those women. Burkoff's going to unfollow me on Instagram after she's gonna, I take her. She's going to she's going to blast <laughs> off. That's what nobody nobody rallies the wagons. Against some swim picks, quite like NC State. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, on that note, 
Let's go to the 400 medley relay, where yes. often we swim the actual fastest backstroke. Next, Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> What's there to talk about? Uh, yeah, I forgot. Okay. Nate <laughs> Douglas split 47. Yeah, probably. Nah. Butterfly? No. Nah. Nah, Virginia just... wins 328. 48. 48. 40, 40, 40, 40 she won 48 two ACCs. Yeah, whatever. Next. Okay. All right. Women's 1650 mile. Paige McKenna, can she do it again? Or will Kinsey McMahon, who is one tenth behind her in seed, or Erica Sullivan, who's who, who do you guys think? <laughs> I I think that Kenzie McMahon, um, as an Irish <laughs> woman, probably doesn't pronounce every syllable of her last name. Mm. Uh, but I could be wrong. Uh, I think Erica Sullivan's going to win. I think it, it's she's clearly better this year. Um, she's in, in better shape. She had a little bit of an injury last year that she was dealing with. I just think this is Erica's race to lose. Um, but they're still going to be 37 seconds behind Katie Ledecky. So crazy. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go so with who's Erica. Who's the real so, winner? Because <laughs> you're... We were talking about this in the 500, but she she does look better than she did last year. And her peak, or not her peak, but her best times of 1523. I just don't think you can rule that out. Even if she goes, even if she goes a 1535, I'd bank on her to go 1535 over any of the other swimmers and win because she just has the higher ceiling. So, so you know how we talk a lot about how there's been a clunker of few years um, in the women's distance free at the NCAA level. It's kind of not been super fast times. Nod your heads. We talk about this a lot. Um, we do. Yeah. So top 15 seeds this year, uh, all but five of them are freshmen or sophomores. So we might be seeing that sort of change as those swimmers become juniors or seniors and the Sandpiper girls matriculate to the NCAA. So that's good news for the overall health of women's NCAA distance swimming. Distance swimming <laughs> is weak, but it's very deep, I've noticed. It took a 441 to make NCAAs this year in the 500. That's two seconds faster than the qualifying time from last year. And every other event stayed the same, but the 500... Just got so much more deeper. The four thirty three might win, which is yeah. off. Off at the top, it's not good. But I think it's deep. All right, two hundred back. Two hundred back. Claire Curzan or Isabel Stodden? Claire Curzan. Curzan. Two, two internationally right. quality swimmers. All we've said about the the Jordan taper being a little different than the McKeever taper. I still think Claire Curzan is going to yeah. win. Tarzan's going to win and break Reagan's record. That's Ooh, dang. She's only right. three tenths off. Okay. And there then text her afterward and said, you should have stayed. <laughs> That's what I would love to see happen. I don't think it will happen there. Claire is a very nice girl. All right. 100 freestyle. McNeil, Walsh, or Husk? Kate hey, Douglas on a relay leadoff. Can I do that again? <laughs> Yeah. Relay lead also will win all of the races this week. <laughs> um, talk about how Tate Douglas can break five, can ha is capable of breaking five American records at this meet, and she can only swim three individual events. That's crazy. But, anyway, what were you saying? What's the fifth one? 50 free on 100 free, one fly, two IM. Oh, okay. Two She's not wrong. Um, I Are we, are we really now... Catherine Burkoff, I know you picked her in the hundred back. In the hundred free, yeah. she can get fourth. She she sure. she got third last year, I think. Okay, but I asked who's gonna win. Yeah. But oh. she, you don't think she can go forty six low? Do you she, think she's gonna win? I think if she wins the hundred back, she's got a chance at the hundred free. Okay, she's won the hundred back twice and won a hundred free zero times. What about Taylor Ruck? <clears throat> Do you think she's going to win? <laughs> I'm just saying she's got a chance. Okay, but I'm just saying, who do you think is going to win? Maggie McNeil. Of course, Maggie <laughs> McNeil. Reckon Walsh. No, Why? that's wrong. It's Maggie McNeil. Why? Because of her relay split? 
No, yeah, because she's know. Maggie she's McNeil. Does. Yeah, she's, she's gonna win the hundred fly. The Gretchen's not the gonna win the hundred back. And then she's gonna have all that momentum you guys have been talking about. I, Stick it I to think, the hundred for I think Maggie McNeil split forty. I think okay, I'm not trying to say it was an anomal anomaly because she's certainly capable of splitting 45 too, but I think she was charged by the fact that there's an SEC title on the line. And when LSU is going to finish eighth in the 400 free relay at NCAAs, she's not going to have that same charge. So, uh, But Yin Yin, this is, we're talking about the individual 100 free and there no, will be I'm an saying, NCAA like, title on the line. I'm saying just because she split 46. Which is probably bigger than an SEC title. Does not mean she's going to win the one free. I, I think it's Gretchen Wall. She's going to defend her title. Which is bigger, an SEC title or an Olympic gold medal? <laughs> <laughs> at, at the swimsuit guy. You know, uh, it's really funny because, like, there are people who would say an SEC absolutely. title. The SEC is a different... You know, we know the Australians are rooting for Maggie McNeil because Gretchen Walsh is a quote-unquote bathtub pool swimmer. Yeah, mm. and Maggie McNeil takes showers. But um <laughs> i it's maggie mcneil i'm sorry guys whatever else you're gonna say is wrong That's, so we can no, move on. We'll wrong. it is pretty cool that they're the two defending champions from the last two years in that event i McNeil, wonder if we've already had that before 22 mcneil oh, and douglas won fly so it's like really it's really like the ultimate showdown in some of these events mm -hmm. <laughs> but anyway moving on 200 breaststroke Okay, Kate Douglas is okay. Willard. We don't need to talk about this. <laughs> but I think Lydia, I think Lydia gets under the American record as it stood when Kate started breaking it. So, so does Mel Stewart. Two oh two nine. What? I think it was two oh two six, right? Oh right, yeah. That it Lily's was record. Yeah. yeah, well, you're right. <laughs> you think she's gonna go two oh two five? I think. I think she'll go 203, 203 low. I don't think she gets under 203. That's just too much of a I agree to disagree. Just Douglas? <laughs> but I've got well, gold medal Mel on my yeah. side, so I don't know what else you guys want from me. Does Douglas go under two minutes? Yep. That's no. Next question. No. no. I think no. I think yes. No. How I made you, a whole video about this. How can you pick her under two minutes and <laughs> Lydia not under 203? Because she's Kate and Lydia's a freshman. Huh. Lydia's an Olympic gold medalist. Kate's a short course freshman. Olympic. She's an Olympic gold yeah, medalist who's never swam guards. This is not at NCAAs. Who's never swum at NCAAs. Swim, swim, Lydia. Swim. Oh. Okay. Two in her fly. Ooh, this is a good one. Oh. This, I am going to pick the University of Texas. <laughs> Easy. I don't. I don't think. I think this is where Alex Walsh is most most vulner, vulnerable. Um, which doesn't mean she can't win it. I you know I think she's clearly the best swimmer in the field, right? Like bar none, best swimmer in the field. But I think she's vulnerable, and I think those three Texas women are going to line up around her, and one of them is just going to catch a wave, and probably won't remember anything about the swim except when they put the medal around her neck. And I think one of the Texas women gets it. If I had to pick one, it's going to be Kelly Pash, but I I am picking a Texas woman to win. I've got to agree with Brayden on this one, Kelly Pash. Um, uh, Riley, who was doing the preview, asked me if I had any Alex Walsh predictions. I said she'd finish second to Pash because, again, as I said, <laughs> huh? <laughs> I was wondering why he picked that. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, Kelly Pash swam her best time this year at the Jill Sturkle Classic in February. Not even Big 12s, a random meet in February. They were so, probably more recent <laughs> for the Jill Sturkle Which Classic. is also what Big 12s is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I think she has a big drop in her because she dropped a lot last year. I wonder what the lowest seed to win an NCAA title is. I was going to say, like, it doesn't, it like, it kind of doesn't count, but like Alex Walsh's 30th seed. Mm. Yeah. I'm sure we've seen that before, right? Like somebody who just, I don't know. Just, I'm trying to think of like, is that really? Cause like, I would what think about, like Hugo when he only showed up for yeah, power. That's, that's true. 
but I think even then he like didn't he time trial something and yeah. then I don't know. Maybe. Um. Okay. All right. We got Kelly Pash. No Alex Walsh. Foreign yeah. free relay. Virginia. 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 Will we see a? End on a high note. I don't know. Forty forty. <laughs> will we see a forty four split? No. <laughs> no, but I think Kate Douglas is breaking some record off the lead off. This is the part of podcasts called trying to build excitement. <laughs> <laughs> there is none. Okay. You think- can, we, can we talk about Spencer picking yeah. Texas to beat the Virginia women in the team? I think I think it's possible. I wrote an entire yeah, article. Possible. Like, it's possible. Wait, but, but he picked that. He picked them. <laughs> Yeah, think, Virginia, 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 Texas, Virginia, Virginia, Virginia. I think Spencer just has been wanting to do that for uh, months, and he finally has an opportunity. But I don't think it's going to happen. No, not this year. No, maybe maybe next, next year. year. Maybe, maybe next once year. Kate, because Kate's gone, and that's yeah. If Kate deal. leaves and Kelly stays, and Texas yeah. replaces their divers, because Texas is losing some divers to grad transfers yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, and if Aaron Gemmel comes, which we don't know if that's going to happen. Yeah. But Texas, Texas's diving recruiting hasn't been quite what it once was, so they can't. They don't have that kind of guaranteed replacement that they used to. You've been listening to the Swim Swam podcast. Stay tuned for new episodes every week. You can take Swim Swim Podcasts on the go by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform. Look for links in the description below, and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos as well.